Hello everyone, welcome back to another video and another episode of Distro Trek. Today we are trying out Endeavor OS. Do you want to use Arch Linux and have all the advantages of Arch Linux like the AUR and Pac-Man and all that stuff, but you don't want to bother installing and configuring it? Well, you can use Manjaro, but if you don't like Manjaro, there's another option, Endeavor. There are some problems with Manjaro. I will, I will say as I start this up, if we can just go that one. A lot of people don't agree with their uh, business decisions. There was the whole uh, open office thing, right, where they were going to bundle proprietary software. And Manjaro is kind of bloated as well, to, uh, to be honest. Endeavor, on the other hand, comes with like just a few pieces of software, uh, which means it is probably going to be a little more difficult to use since it won't have any of that... Uh, they'll have left less uh, user-friendliness. But if you want a very unbloated, trustworthy uh, Arch install without all the hassle, um, you can use and Oh, because I just realized that it's showing my entire desktop instead of just the window. Um, hold on. All right, there we go. I fixed it. So here we are. Uh, it ships with a XFCE by default. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, here's the install system. All right, so without further ado, let's move on to step one installation. So we just click on this little thing right here, and we should get it go. Alright, there we go. Also, um, I realize my webcam is very wide. Um, I can't figure out how to resize it because the only way I know how to resize it is with uh, holding Alt and, you know, dragging the window. Uh, but when you hold Alt in Linux, that just drags the entire window. And I can't be bothered to try and figure out the shortcut because I don't have too much time to record this. So yeah, so just it's on American English by default, so that's fine. We can go to America, New York, English, US, default. Um, yeah, we can just erase disk. There we go. Uh, we can just use the letter A for everything. Okay, that's too short apparently. There we go. And we use the same password for the administrator account. And there we go. We can install. Install now. All right. So yeah, this might take a little while. So I will get back to you once uh, this is finished installing. All right, it has finished installing. So we can just click restart now. And done. Hold on, I booted back into the live installation media. So I think we need to uh, just uh, remove that real quick. Remove Endeavor OS. Okay, now everything should be working properly. Yep, there we go. So we can just boot into Endeavor OS with Linux Linux. Okay, and there we go. Just type in our secure password, and there we go. Connection established. All right, so it's automatically connected to the internet. Want to change wallpaper? Changing wall... Yeah, sure, I'll change the wallpaper. Whoa! What on earth? Okay. Uh, so, we got a little welcome panel. Very, uh, <laughs> uh, minimalistic, I guess. Uh, find a way to the Endeavor OS website. Add more apps. Install popular apps. Okay. After install tweaks. So, I've got a bunch of things here. Um, we got AOR and Yay, which is the or helper NVIDIA users. That's actually going to be helpful for me if I ever install this on my computer because I have an NVIDIA card. So, oh gosh. Okay, it's just opened up Firefox. NVIDIA installer. Okay then. Alright, well anyways. Let's just close out of that. And here we are. So that installation was pretty uh, pretty good. <laughs> There's not much to say about it. 206 upstream updates are available. Close this window to start the update. Okay, so it just kind of does it for you. That's kind of nice. Updating root password required. Oh. Okay, so it just kind of... I guess it just inputs uh, Pac-Man SYU. Alright, so I'll give that installation a an 8 out of 10. Actually, we can give it a 9 out of 10. I mean, there wasn't really anything wrong with it. It did everything an installer needed to do. It was very fast as well, probably because it didn't need to 
connect to the internet or anything. Yeah, I think we can give it a 9 out of 10. Uh, it needs us to confirm our installation, so just hit add. And there we go. Okay. Well, while that's doing that thing, we can move on to our next section, desktop environment. Now, Endeavor OS is essentially just Arch Linux with a pre-installed desktop environment and a few extra programs. So it's going to be pretty uh, desktop environment agnostic, so you can pretty much just install anything you want and it should work fine. Whereas with other distros, they're sort of designed to work with a certain desktop environment, and so then it might not work as well if you were to install a different one. So that's pretty nice, but honestly, I think I'm fine with XFCE. I mean, XFCE is pretty nice. Very lightweight, very um, uh, minimal. It seems like they have themed it a little bit, and you know, it looks okay. Let's see if we can customize it to look just uh, just a little bit better. We go into the settings, we can find appearance. Um, so, Edwida. Oh, okay. Let's see. Um, paper. Yeah, let's go with paper icons. And let's set that to Arc Dark, which I think is what this is set to actually. We have to go into the window manager, I think, to change the uh, window borders. Yeah, I've got, oh, we've actually got quite a few things pre-installed. Okay. Yeah, I've got a lot of things here, actually. Oh, gosh, that looks kind of terrifying in a weird way. These are all really weird. This one's kind of reminiscent of a Haiku OS. XFCE? Okay. Yeah, let's just stick with a uh, Arc Dark for now. It's an alright looking theme. And, yeah. You can modify the panel. Panel preferences. I like my panel to just be solid black. Yeah, there we go. And we can edit this thing as well. So it doesn't have any text next to it. Alright, yeah, this is looking pretty good. This is pretty much uh, just how I like it. Overall, I think we can give desktop environment a 9 out of 10. Its default desktop looks pretty good. I can make it... Uh, suit my preferences with minimal, minimal configuration. And, you know, you can install any desktop you want because this is uh, it's Arch Linux. It's pretty configurable. All right, part three, bloat. As I said, a lot of people don't like certain operating systems because they are bloated, which means they come with a bunch of stuff that you either uh, don't use or just uh, don't want. So if we look here, let's just see... Let's just scroll through the pre-installed programs and see if there's anything that I don't that I wouldn't want already installed. Yeah, this is all pretty standard stuff, it looks like. I'm not sure what those things are. Icon browser. Well, that's interesting. Okay, I don't know what that is. Comes with an image viewer, comes with some internet things. Not sure what those are. Yeah, this is a pretty minimal install. I think we can give bloat an 8 out of 10. I have to, I have to be harsh. <laughs> Uh, somewhere. Base Arch Linux would be a, a 10 out of 10, obviously. I really like it when I can just, you know, choose everything I want without, like, any weird programs that I don't know uh, what they do installed. But yeah, overall, it's still it's still pretty good. Not nearly as bloated as many other uh, operating systems. This thing is, is still uh, updating. It's really uh, taking its time. I wonder if it's... It's going at two, 300... Yeah, it's like a quarter megabyte per second. <laughs> like, what is this? It's probably just set to like some weird mirrors. Oh, hey, that's a... It's a Pac-Man because it uses the Pac-Man package manager. All right, guys. Very funny. Does it come with Pamac? I don't think it does. Nope. If we open up a new terminal, can I just... Um, can I just do something? So I'll, I'll be honest, I don't really know how to use um, uh, Pac-Man. I mean, I, I know the... Uh, the basic syntax like this dash s is install um but i'm not sure like can i just install pamac like that error you failed to init transaction or initiate transaction unable to lock database if you cannot lock database file exists if you're sure package manager is not already running you can okay here let's load up uh firefox and see okay that was weird. We go over to Arch Linux website. We do a package search. Pamac. 
No packing. Okay, so it's probably in the AUR then. Nice thing about Arch Linux and you know Arch-based uh, distributions is that you have the Arch Wiki, uh, which is very uh, you know, known, sort of known for being extremely uh, useful and very good uh, documentation. So if you just go to AUR, it'll probably tell us exactly how to do what we're trying to do. Installing packages. Step one, acquire the build files, including package build and possibly other acquired files. All right, I'm just gonna read this and uh, figure it out. So I'll get back to you in a little bit. All right, so it looks like we just have to copy and paste this URL here uh, after typing in git clone. All right, and it returned fatal. That's not good. Oh, I did it wrong. I need to copy this URL, git clone, and then just paste that. Okay, all right, I've moved over to the directory for Pemec, and then we just have to do make pkg dash si, and then it should just do its thing. All right, so uh, it finally finished uh, doing its updates, and I just initiated the uh, install of uh, Pemec. So this is probably going to take a little while as well. Um, I need to figure out how to update the mirrors, I guess. So, yeah. Probably should have, uh, figured that out before I, uh, just it decided to, uh, install Pamac, but whatever. This will probably take a little while, so I will let it do its thing, and- oh, okay, it's already finished. Oh gosh, hold on. And, okay, so yeah, I'm just gonna let it do its thing, and then I will reboot, because it told me to reboot. And then uh, I will, I will, I will get back to you. All right, it is finished doing its thing, and I can just log in here. And if we go into our panel, we should find Pamac. No, not Pamax. And it's labeled itself as add a slash remove software. And there we go. So now we can actually take a look at our available software. So I guess that brings us on to part four software availability. I think we already know what score this is going to get. Arch Linux is sort of a legendary for its packages. Obviously you have the base uh, Arch repository which has something like, I don't know, like 10,000 packages. So that's already pretty big. And then of course you have the AUR, which anyone can upload to, which is both a good and a bad thing. And that has like 70,000 packages. I'm just going off of memory, I might be wrong. But you're going to be able to get pretty much any program you could want straight from either the base uh, Arch repos or the Arch user repository. Now I'm not sure if this is automatically connected to the AUR. So if we search up like Minecraft for example, because Minecraft is in the AUR, but not in the other the other one. So if we search Minecraft, no package found. Okay, so this is just going on the base Arch repos. But even just the base Arch repos still have a ton of stuff. So obviously we've got Firefox right there. We want Discord. There it is. Lutris. Oh, that's not how you spell it. Lutris. There we go. OBS. Okay, and Live. GIMP. I could keep going, but uh, you get the point. Another thing is that, uh, of course, Arch Linux and in turn Endeavor OS is a rolling release distro, meaning everything is going to be as up to date as it can be. So you see, for example, GIMP right here, this is version 2.10. Um, but if I were here, actually, I can just show you. I have uh, GIMP installed on my Linux Mint, and if you see, that's GIMP 2.8, which is uh, outdated. And that's because the Linux Mint repos are not as up to date. So I'm going to give Endeavor OS a 9 out of 10 for software availability. I'm not giving it a 10 out of 10 because, you know, obviously it is a Linux distro, which, you know, to, to us Linux users, that isn't really a problem, but I do want to be fair. Also, although the Arch user repository is amazing, anyone can upload to it, which can, as I said before, can be both a good and a bad thing. There have been instances of you know, malicious uh, things being found on the Arch user repository. So, unfortunately, I cannot give this a perfect score. But I think 9 out of 10 is is uh, more than fair. Now moving on to part 5, 
installing packages. Now obviously we have uh, a PAMAC right here, so we want to install something like, let's just find something a bit smaller. Let's find a Google Chrome, or not. Google, I think I have to type it like this. Or not, maybe Google Chrome is not available. Actually, that would make sense because it's kind of um, spyware. <laughs> what about Brave? Brave browser, no, that's probably the AUR as well. Let's get Lutris. Yeah, it's just 6.1 megabytes, so we can just hit install and apply. You can choose optional dependencies. I'm not going to choose those because that'll make it take longer to install. Type in our password, and uh, there you go. I'll click apply, and okay, there we go. Now, obviously, I'm using PAMAC right here and not the terminal. Uh, PAMAC does not come with uh, Endeavor OS, which is kind of weird. You would think that it probably would, but uh, it doesn't. And so we had to go through that whole uh, process of installing it straight from the AUR. So that is a little unfortunate, but you know, once you have PAMAC, you have it and you can use it just like any other software manager. Also, if we go into the terminal, uh, of course, Arch Linux and in turn Endeavor OS comes with Pacman. Installing things as Pacman is very simple, just sudo pacman dash capital S, and then uh, whatever you want. Actually, in this case, we can show this example of removing, so dash r, and I think dash r s also removes any uh, other dependencies it has. So we just type in Lutris. We can do that. Actually, hold on, let's just go into the menu to confirm that it's installed first. Yep, there it is. So we can just open it up. And there's Lutris. There you go. We want to uninstall it, just hit yes on this, and it's done, and it is no longer there. I'll give installing packages an 8 out of 10. Overall, really uh, fantastic scores all around. Alright, it's time to tally up the scores. Drumroll please. I am totaling up the scores. Also, if you saw my last video, there was a gaming section. I just decided to remove that entirely because this is a virtual machine, so it's not really going to be able to game anyways, and I'm not going to bother installing it uh, every one of these operating systems just to test out gaming. Alright, I've averaged out all the scores. Endeavor OS has an 8.6, which I'm going to round out to a final score of 8.5 out of 10. I want to leave a little bit of room, you know, if any uh, better distro comes along. So yeah, overall, pretty uh, fantastic distro, uh, first impressions at least. If you're looking to install Arch Linux and you don't want to have to bother with, you know, the whole installation and configuration process, Endeavor OS might just be the distro for you. And honestly, I think I might end up switching to this. There is another distro called Solus, which I do want to try uh, as well before I do make a final decision, because I do plan on uh, distro hopping. But, um, yeah. Hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.